back to the channel. I want to thank you guys for stopping in and watching. Before we get into what we're going to do here today, there's a couple things I wanted to discuss with you. A lot of people have asked me how I like the DJI Osmo Action Camera. And I can't express myself enough. It is the GoPro killer. I have GoPro cameras. I got 8, 9, 10. I got the GoPro 360. And I will say the GoPro 360 has some pretty good awesome footage. But it's really expensive compared to this camera. This camera you can typically find it for 200 bucks or so. I know when I got it, I got it for 150 and I got a bunch of batteries and everything. And it, it all added up to like 200 bucks. That was with an extra case and everything else. I really like this camera. It doesn't do that great in low light situations. It does about as well as the GoPro does. So we're going to use this video here to show you guys just what it can do. It is my favorite camera out of my whole fleet. It is the camera, my go-to camera for most things. A lot of times though when I'm filming stuff out here guys, it's with my iPhone. Because it's just so easy to get videos off my iPhone onto my iMac, um, onto my MacBook Pro and my Mac Mini. I just prefer to use the phone, but I wanted to show you guys just what this could do because you never can tell in any of my videos what camera I'm using. They all look pretty good except for a few older ones where I'm using the GoPro Hero White uh, 7 or whatever it was. But today's video is going to be about, we're doing a video series. Now, instead of this really being a build, we're going to be doing like how-to videos along the series build. We're going to take this 500 trail and we're going to turn it into a 64, 65 inch, I think 65 inch uh, machine. It's either 64 or 65, I don't remember, I had to measure mine. But we're gonna turn it into that wide of a machine and the only things you're gonna need to do is buy front and rear, upper and lower control arms. You're going to need the inner, tie rod end the outers are the same but you will need the inner tie rod ends which are easy to do and you're going to need all four axles so you're going to need um all four brake lines and you need you also need the uh shocks and you're going to need the e-brake cables now me i forgot to order the e-brake cables but we'll get those at a later date. We'll do that. I just want to get the build, the main build complete. Then I'll worry about getting the e-brake cables. But I was thinking I might still be able to use the actual e-brake cables too. Because in the rear, we're going to have to flip-flop some hubs. So whenever we get to that point, make sure you stay tuned. Whenever we get to that point, I'll be sure to bring it on camera and let you guys know what we got to do back there. Because there is some things that you got to do to make this whole build work. So, without further ado, let's get this thing jacked up. As soon as I get it jacked up, I'll be right back to talk to you. And if you would, please throw us a thumbs up on the video. We always like those. If you're not subscribed, please consider getting subscribed because it totally helps the channel. It helps it grow tremendously. Also, think about considering to be a channel member. I got them down as low as a dollar a month, which is pretty low actually, but I just wanted everybody to be able to help out if they wanted to help out and, and it be affordable to help out. So that is one way that you can help out. And the other way is by calling up Main Street Cycle because they're the ones that sponsor this build. They're actually sponsored 98% of my videos that I do. So definitely go over and check out Main Street Cycle. They got all your parts, accessories, tires, rims, windshields, light bars, you name it, they got it. And if they don't got it, they can get it for you. Let them know that Redneck Garage sent you. And that is on my nerves. Let's get to it. So while I got you guys here, I wanted to show you what a bad wheel bearing actually looks like. Can you see that movement there? See the whole caliper and everything's moving? 
see how the axle's moving now chances are this bearing could be loose because it doesn't ground we could probably tighten it up but while we're in here and doing these video series we're just going to mark that on the list to just put a new one in and be done with it so that's exactly what that would look like let's get these tires taken off of here and we'll get the bumper taken off To remove this cover, these bumper, this whole assembly, you're gonna need a 10 millimeter socket and an Ugga Dugga gun. If you don't have an Ugga Dugga gun, I will pray for you, son. To remove this from the winch, we're going to want a 14 millimeter socket. Dang, that's tight. So we're also gonna wanna get a 15 millimeter wrench on the back side here. <clears throat> so you also need to know how to remove your winch you can do that too Now what I like to do is put my nuts back on the bolts, not in my wife's purse. So now we got that taken care of, we got to actually remove the winch. So now to remove the winch, we got to get a 13 millimeter socket and put it on our Ugga Dugga gun. If you ain't got an Ugga Dugga gun, I'll continue to pray for you, son. Under here, there's four bolts. We're just gonna pull them out, just like so. Don't lose anything. Just like so. Just like so. Just like so. Now, one thing, this is how you can access your winch. And uh, this is why, this right here is why I don't use the free spool on the Siamoto winches. Because the free spool just sucks. This is why people always ask why. Why don't nobody use the free spool? Well, this is why, right here. This is why. You can't get the sucker to move. And it's tight getting in there. But getting it open like this will help you re-spool your winch. Now, I'm going to have to go through this cable because I haven't treated this cable like I treated mine with oil and everything. And it's about time to do that again. It's not fraying or nothing. It's in good shape. It's just rusty. We don't want it to be rusty. So now you want to put your bolts back in the bottom. That's what I like to do. The bolts back in the bottom. A new winch will actually bolt up. Most winches will actually bolt up to these and reuse these here. <laughs> so 
So guys, that concludes part one of like 50 because this is going to be a long, drawn-out process. It ain't that big of a job, but when you like me, work Monday through Friday, you only want to come out here and work for about two hours and then go edit a video and be done with it. But I figured we'd start with how to remove the winch because a lot of people want to know that. So we just started with removing the winch. That's the easiest. And then next uh, video, we're going to remove the knuckles, the axles, and show you actually how to remove the front control arms. And we'll just keep moving from there. We got to draw this out because we are still waiting on two axles and two shocks. I do have everything else except for the emergency brake cables. You got to make sure to check out Main Street Cycle and thank them guys for making these videos possible. And I also want to hear from you what you think about the video quality. Is it good enough yet or do I need to get even better? Let me know. I'm really trying my best here. So I'm a newbie. I done went and set different camera settings a couple weeks ago and got it kind of dialed in in different light situations. So I'm trying it out on this DJI Osmo, which isn't the best of cameras for indoor work. So let me know what you think. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Peace out. And God bless. And we'll see you in the next one.